Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Camila Williams. Thank you for joining us. Phoenix was the fastest growing big city in the United States between 2010 and 2020. It added 163,000 more residents, according to new data released by the U.S. Census Bureau. Two of its suburbs, Buckeye and Goodyear in the West Valley, were among the 10 fastest growing of all U.S. cities during the decade. The growth across the Phoenix metro area drove up Maricopa County's population by 15.8%. Pinal County, which has exploded with affordable housing on the outskirts of Metro Phoenix, grew 13.2 percent. Yavapai added just under 12 percent of its population, and Tucson's Pima County grew 6.4 percent during the decade. The newly released census data will allow the Independent Redistricting Commission to divide the state into nine new congressional districts and 30 legislative districts. Phoenix Police Chief Jerry Williams was handed a one day suspension. This comes after lawyers issued a report that criticized her agency's role in a now discredited gang case filed against demonstrators at a police protest. The report says the decision to charge 15 protesters with assisting a street gang was made without seeking input from the Phoenix Police Gang's Enforcement Unit. The outside lawyers said the agency didn't have credible evidence to support the claim that the protesters were members of an anti-police gang. The city is asking the Arizona Attorney General's Office to investigate any criminal matter arising from the report. And this morning, Arizona reported more than 3,000 additional COVID-19 cases for the first time in six months. And the Navajo Nation will return to orange status starting Monday due to a recent rise of COVID-19 cases. Yesterday, the Navajo Department of Health issued three new public health emergency orders for businesses and schools while revising in-person gathering limits for certain events. The tribe's mask mandate remains in effect, but there is no daily curfew or lockdown on the tribal nation that is the country's largest. With COVID-19 surging and mask policies being put back in place, a group of education advocates, doctors, parents and teachers are speaking out. These groups are challenging the constitutionality of Arizona's law prohibiting school districts and charters from implementing universal mask policies. They are seeking an injunction to let school require masks as COVID-19 cases continue to rise. Um, under the Arizona Constitution, uh, legislative legislation is not effective or operative for 90 days um, past the end of the legislative session, so the close of the legislative session. And that um, for this year, uh, that date can vary, but for this year, that date uh, of um, effectiveness is September 29th. As COVID-19 restrictions are tightening across the valley, Cronkite News reporter Jamie Landers walks us through the details and the strength of the Delta strain. After a brief period of decline, COVID-19 cases are back on the rise, and experts say the Delta variant is to blame. So what is it, and how can you protect yourself against it? Delta, originally found in India, is a mutation of the original coronavirus strain. According to the World Health Organization, Delta is the fastest and the fittest when it comes to the spread. Yale Medicine reported Delta is 50% more transmissible than the Alpha variant, which was already 50% more transmissible than the original strain. One recent study from China found that people who are infected with Delta have, on average, about 1,000 times more copies of the virus in their respiratory tracts than those infected with the original strain, and are infectious earlier in the course of their illness. The numbers sound pretty daunting, so what can be done about it? People who are not vaccinated face the most risk of infection. But according to ABC 15 health insider Dr. Shad Mavasti, the tried and true precautions should be taken by vaccinated people as well, including wearing a mask indoors and social distancing when possible. It is possible to get infected even though you got the shot, but preliminary data shows two doses of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine appear to be about 88% effective against disease and 96% effective against hospitalization with the Delta variant, according to Public Health England. And now we take a look back at some of our top sports stories, including some of the Phoenix Suns players. The Mexican national soccer team came back to Los Angeles over the past weekend to play against Nigeria in a friendly game. 
Cronkite News reporter Kimberly Silvero Batista spoke with fans expressing their excitement to finally see El Tree play. Olé, 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 olé. These are the chants fans of the Mexico national soccer team have been yearning to yell since it last played against Cuba in 2019. Los Angeles co-captains of the support group called. Pancho Villa's army said they're glad to be back supporting the team. We're glad to be back. I mean, the last time Mexico played here was in the Rose Bowl a, few, a couple years back. But we're glad to be back in the stands. It's different than just watching them at home without no fans. And just being there in person, it's like, you know, it's happy. It's a happy time for all of us. More than 50,000 people celebrated the return of El Tri to L.A. and the return of tailgating with family and friends, wearing their jerseys, making a carne asada, and listening to live music. Fans like Kevin Jimenez said there was no other place he'd rather be. Aside from, you know, obviously the game, the soccer game, or whatever, I look forward to spending some great time with, you know, great people, my, my, my friends, my family. Obviously, to see back here, it's the, the ambience is just amazing. As you can see behind me, fans of the Mexico national soccer team are walking towards the LA Coliseum to support the team on today's game after more than a year of no sports event due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Another fan who has attended two of Mexico's World Cup games was excited to see the team shine in Los Angeles. But just the past couple World Cups, I actually got to go to a Mexico game in the World Cups and just that was the best experience I could ever ask for. The past two, the one in Russia and the one in Brazil I went to. Fans rejoiced when Mexico won this weekend's friendly 4-0. In Los Angeles, Kimberly Silverio Bautista, Cronkite News. Suns fans have grown accustomed to seeing the stars of the team, like Devin Booker and Chris Paul, shine. But many players that you don't see as much have worked hard to help, this, to help get the Suns to where they are today. Cronkite sports reporter Aaron Slindy took a deep dive in the, into the career of Suns point guard Javon Carter, a.k.a. the Bulldog, and his path to the NBA. Javon Carter was once a Mountaineer. Carter fade away. Got it over the freshman Hunter. Now he is fighting to win his first NBA championship with the Suns. He had to prove himself. He had to get better. He had to show people that, that he could play at this level. Carter wasn't a highly recruited player. Many people thought he was too undersized to play on the big stage. They thought he was good but not good enough to make it. He focused on his defense. Um, so he he would focus on things that he knew he was good at. I just look at, I look for my mistakes, you know, uh, see what I can fix. You know, that's always something I'm doing wrong and I'm just trying to figure out how can I, how can I fix it and not make the same mistake twice. Carter spent every moment he had while he was at WVU improving his game. He was getting extra shots even when no one was looking. A lot of players, you know, just expect things to come to them because they are talented and they don't realize that no matter how talented you are, you need to work at everything you do. Carter proved his doubters wrong, both on and off the court. Carter was the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year and an academic All-American. Now he could soon be an NBA champion with Mountaineer Nation standing behind him. Here at West Virginia, we're, we're really proud of him, happy for him, and we hope the Suns come back with that championship. In Phoenix, Aaron Slindy, Cronkite News. The Suns face elimination tonight as they take on the Bucks in Milwaukee for Game 6 of the NBA Finals. That game starts at 6. Some big news surrounding the Suns this morning with several outlets reporting that Chris Paul has tested positive for the coronavirus and has entered the NBA's health and safety protocols. The Suns say Paul has entered protocols but have not confirmed that he has tested positive. Emily Carmen is in the newsroom with more on how this might impact the team and its championship hopes. NBA protocols require any player who tests positive for COVID-19 to quarantine for at least 10 days. They must also have a negative test to return to the court. Now that timeline could be longer, but it also could be shorter if Chris Paul tests negative and only came into contact with a COVID positive person. Either way, there is a good chance that the Suns star guard will miss game one of the Western Conference Finals. Let's look at the possible scenarios. The Suns play the winner of the Jazz Clippers series. Right now, that's tied at 2-2 two and two with Game 5 tonight. If it only goes six games, the Suns would play Game 1 of the Western Conference Finals as early as Sunday, 
which is only five days into a potential 10-day quarantine for Paul. If the Clippers series goes to Game 7, the Suns won't play Game 1 until Tuesday, which leaves a little more room for Paul's return. Suns coach Monty Williams says his team will be prepared for anything. You know, these are moments where you need a lot of faith. We're in the playoffs and we got a chance to, to win and, and, and win big. And so my faith isn't going to waver now because we've had a few obstacles. We've had obstacles all season long and um, we've uh, gotten through a lot of stuff. Fans are taking the Chris Paul news hard as they know this Suns team has had a string of bad luck in the playoffs from bad calls to suspensions to injuries. Former Suns beat reporter Scott Bordeaux says it's hard not to think this is yet another bad break. They can't believe this is happening again. They have a, this team when healthy has a great chance to win the NBA championship. And then this happens. I, I'm sure there are a lot of Suns fans just shaking their head this morning. The Suns are still the winningest franchise in NBA history without a championship. While Chris Paul's status remains unclear for now, there is no doubt that Phoenix Suns fans are still hoping that this is the year. Harrison? Thanks, Emily. The Suns say they will have an update on Chris Paul's availability on Saturday. Wheelchair rugby is a sport you don't hear about often, but Cronkite sports reporter Aaron Slendy tells us how one local Arizona athlete's love for this unique sport brought him to the top. Joe Jackson has always had a passion for high-intensity sports. After watching Murderball, the wheelchair rugby documentary, he knew he had found his calling. After that, like I was, I was sold. I was like, okay, getting a chair, I'm gonna find a team, and I'm gonna work my way up. Jackson was paralyzed from the chest down in a football accident in 2005, but he hasn't let his injury stop him from doing what he loves. I mean, I'm the smallest guy out there, one of them, and I like to hit. Um, like to try and make plays, just, just be an athlete. Jackson is a member of the three-time national winning Phoenix Heat. Last year, Jackson was training to be on the 2020 Paralympic team until the pandemic hit and the games were canceled. There were many limitations on the athletes and strict protocol when it came to their training. But Jackson never quit reaching for his goal, to be a Paralympian. He's been working through COVID, pushing with a mask on by himself in the gym. Joe Jackson spent many summers training to be one of the best wheelchair rugby players in the nation. This year, he will be one of 12 members to represent Team USA at the 2021 Paralympics in Tokyo. Just to represent the USA like at the highest level and try to bring back uh, a gold. The support Jackson gets from his friends, family and the Paralympic community make the sacrifice he has made to get to this point worth it. It's like a little family, even at like the local level. Um, so here, like. All these guys are great friends of mine, um, and we learn from each other. It's like our own little support group because we're all going through somewhat similar situations. USA has not won a medal since 2008 and is looking forward to taking down two-time defending champions Australia. In Phoenix, Aaron Slindy, Cronkite News. The rugby team leaves on August 17th before the games start on the 25th. Only 12 athletes were selected to the 2021 USA women's basketball roster, and three of them are members of the Phoenix Mercury. This year, the WNBA All-Star team will take on Team USA to help prepare them for the Tokyo Olympics. Cronkite sports reporter Aaron Slindy tells us how excited the Phoenix trio is to represent their state and their country. This year's WNBA All-Star game is going to be different than most. The WNBA decided the players selected to Team USA will face the WNBA All-Star team on Wednesday in Las Vegas. I don't think it'll be the traditional uh, setting that you see. And, um, I know I ain't letting nobody get no free layup. Nah, no free layup. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think it's definitely going to be a competitive environment. You know, at the end of the day, we're all competitors. We all love this game and we all want to win. Three players from the Phoenix Mercury will represent the red, white and blue. Diana Taurasi, Brittany Griner, and Skylar Diggins-Smith will be playing for Team USA this year. It's just a higher level, more intensity, I think. Uh, you know, of course, the Olympics is the highest tier, and then, you know, it kind of trickles down from there. The main purpose of the game is to help Team USA prepare for the Olympics. USA will be going for their seventh straight gold medal, a streak that hasn't been broken since some of the players have been born. But with the level of international basketball getting higher each year, the players understand how crucial this game is to their preparation. 
But for right now, I'm just focusing on um, what I could do to help our team win a goal in, in whatever or however big of or small of a role that is. Although many of these athletes have spent the entire year competing against one another, they are looking forward to playing on the same team. You know, it's not often you get to do what you love with, with people you really care about and you have a great friendship with, uh, you know, beyond the court. And, um, you know, we've we've been able to do it um, together every step of the way. Team USA will continue to train together in Las Vegas, playing exhibition games versus Australia and Nigeria before heading to Tokyo. In Phoenix, Aaron Slindy, Cronkite News. Tarasi said she will not play in the All-Star game to make sure she is ready for the Olympics. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for Break It Down. That's next. And for top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.